What's up guys, Gary with self.dev. Today we are gonna go over how to set up your Bitbucket CICD pipeline. Now, what is CICD? It's continuous integration, continuous development, and it's all about shortening the length of time it takes for you to make changes to your code and get those out to production. How do we do that? Whenever somebody makes a PR, we can check multiple things automatically. Maybe we wanna check and make sure that they meet our linting and formatting standards slash guidelines. Maybe we also wanna check and make sure the project at least builds, that's probably a good idea. And then we probably also wanna check and make sure that they're not failing any tests. Now, how do we do that? Well, in your project, at the root of your project, we are going to make a bitbucket-pipelines.yml file. This is what Bitbucket looks at to know what to do for CICD um, and for all of your pipelines. Now, the first thing I like to do in here is say image node 20, actually it needs to be lowercase node 20, there we go. Now, this is just telling Bitbucket, hey, we need to use node version 20 for all, everything we declare in these pipelines. Next, we are going to make the pipeline. As you can see, GitHub Copilot is guessing what I'm going to write. It's mostly right, but we're still just gonna type this out anyway so I can explain what each thing is doing on its own. Pipelines is where we're going to declare all of our pipelines, as you might guess. So we can have default, which is going to run pretty much anytime we make a commit to a branch. Um, we can have pull requests, which we can make specific pipes for specific types of pull requests. So if we have something we want to run on every pull request, we can do that. If we have something we want to run just on feature branches, just on hot fixes, or just on bug fixes, we can do that. And then we can also run specific things whenever they merge to develop or merge to main. For our first pipe here, we are just going to use default this and Use indentation here, this is just one tab. Um, the tab spacing is important in YML files. So we are making our default pipeline. This is what's gonna run again on every commit. And then we need to say, hey, this is the step we need. We're just gonna keep the name it has here, build and test. And the name is what's going to show up in the pipeline steps. So if we go in Bitbucket, we're going to pipelines, and then we're going to our first pipeline here. If this is brand new, you're probably gonna have nothing in pipelines, but I've run this a few times before, and then this is the name of the steps. So check linting and formatting. That, what do you think it's doing? I mean, obviously it's checking linting and formatting. Next, we are building the project, and then we're running tests. And as you can see in this one, I had some tests that failed, so we would not merge this pull request. But that is what the name is going to show up as in your pipeline. So just make sure the name you use is something that's descriptive of what's happening in the step. Next, we're going to say caches node. This is going to check and see if we have a node cache or a node modules cache. And if we do, it's going to use that. If we don't, it's just going to make a fresh install from NPM. That's just gonna save you time. Bitbucket does use minutes, you get 50 free. And honestly, the minutes aren't super expensive, but you do kind of want to make sure your pipeline's optimized, efficient, and effective. Because if it takes 30 minutes, your dev might have something broken in that pipeline and they're gonna have to wait 30 minutes before they figure it out. Versus if your pipeline only takes three minutes to run or a minute 22 seconds or a minute 16 or a minute 48, then you get a lot quicker feedback and can make changes and iterate a lot faster. Ideally, you're checking all of this locally, like you've got some pre-commit hook that checks all of this before you make a commit to uh, whatever branch you have in remote. We just wanna double check and be safe. So node cache is again gonna check and see if we have a node cache and if it does use that, if not make a fresh install for npm install. Next, we're gonna say script and we're going to do npm install. And that, as you might guess, is just gonna do npm install. Here you can put whatever scripts you have. So if you have specific things in your package.json you need to run, you can just specify those here and it will run those. Next, we're going to do, now this is kind of where the project specific stuff comes in. If you're just using a standard React project, you could probably do npm run build or whatever build command you need to make sure it builds. I am using NX, so I am going to throw the command I use for that here. So NPX, NX, run mini, all target build. And that's just going to make sure all of the projects I have in this mono repo build correctly. And maybe we're just going to do just build and keep it basic for now. So we have our basic pipeline that checks and makes sure that our project builds every time we make a commit to Bitbucket. Let's go ahead and see what changes I have here. Let's go ahead and make a change to a file. Um, we'll just do apptsx. And then because I can't think of anything else, we're just gonna add a console log hi right here. 
and then save. Then we are going to open up our terminal. We're going to say git status, if I can spell it correctly, git add a to add the pipeline file and the change we made to app tsx. Git commit dash m added a console log in app.tsx. And then we're gonna do git push. Hopefully you know the basic git stuff. I'm not gonna go into that, um, but that's gonna push our changes up to remote. So now if we go to Bitbucket and we're going to refresh our pipelines, actually we didn't even need to refresh. It just shows up here. You can see that it is in progress. We can click here to dig into our pipeline and you can see it's running the build command here. It's queued right now. Do we have anything else running? We do not. Cool. Now we can see it's running. Here you've got your build setup. I'm not going to show that because there's stuff in there I don't want people to see. Here we've got npm install. So as you can see, it ran npm install. It added 1400 packages. Um, you get the basic npm output stuff here. And then as we scroll down, we can see that the npx or the npm, sorry, the nx build command was run. And we successfully ran the build command for two projects. So we know our projects built successfully. And then it does the build teardown. Um, that part's not super important. That's just cleanup stuff. But we know our project built successfully. Now, if you had maybe npm run lint or npm run format, check, npm run test, you could also run those here as well. I would probably have those divided up into different steps. Like maybe you have a build step, maybe you have a another step after this that is test. And then maybe you have another step after this that is lint. How you set that up, up to you. I prefer having them in separate steps. I actually prefer not even having the steps inside the pipelines because something you can do to kind of treat these more like variables is declare them outside of the pipelines. So here we can say steps, and then in here we can define all of our steps. Now the formatting is slightly different. Uh, we do need to adjust the tab stuff here as well. And then instead of not having anything here, we're going to have an ampersand or wait, is that an ampersand? The and sign. Um, and then we're just going to say build. For this one, we'll do the same thing and we'll say test. And then for this last one here, we're not actually gonna run these, but we'll just say lint. And then how we connect these to our pipelines. So we wanna add all three of these to our pipelines. In here, we'll still declare the step, but we'll just point it to each one of those predefined steps above with an asterisk and then the name of the step. So now we've got our steps up here. So if we wanna reuse them in multiple pipelines, we can easily do that instead of redeclaring the whole thing every time. So maybe we want branches. Actually, let's go ahead and show how to do pipelines. So we'll, or uh, pull requests, rather. So we'll say pull dash requests. And then if we wanted to do build, test, and lint inside every pull request, we would have that. So the stars are saying, hey, run this on every pull request. If you wanted to run stuff specifically on certain pull requests, like maybe you use feature uh, bug fix, hot fix, branch naming, we could say feature slash star. And then that would run it on every feature branch. If we wanted to run on bug fixes, we could do that. If we wanted to run on hot fixes, we could do that. And that's assuming your branch names are prefixed with feature, bug fix, or hot fix. Uh, if you don't have a branch fee prefixed with hot fix, this would not run. Um, it would run the steps defined here for all PRs, but it would only run these steps on feature branches, bug fix, or hot fixes. So just to explain that a little bit more, if we had a branch named hot fix slash, we'll say bug fix actually, bug fix, remove console, logs and that's the name of our branch so now whenever we commit or make a pr for this branch these steps would run yeah that's why i like to define the steps outside um just so you can reuse them in different build or different pipelines easier without having to copy and paste this whole chunk of code every time now another thing we can do are branches so this is stuff that will run whenever we make changes to specific branches. So again, you can run whenever you make a commit to a feature, hotfix, or bug branch. I usually use these for things like develop. So now whenever we merge a pull request into develop, we can have, uh, maybe there's additional tests you want to run in develop. You can have specific tests run just for that. 
And again, we can copy this, go to Bitbucket, go to our validator, and then paste that in to make sure everything's valid. I like to do that before I make the commit just to make sure I'm not gonna push up broken stuff and see errors in here that I have to fix later. It just helps. Again, I'll have that linked in the description. But that is the basics of setting up your Bitbucket CI CD pipeline. Um, use cases may vary. There's other options you can add in here. There's a lot more detail. I'm gonna have a link to the documentation for this in the description of the video as well. Uh, if you guys wanna see more on this, I can definitely dig into the more advanced stuff in this, but just let me know in the comments below. I think that's probably about it for now though. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments down below. If you learned something from this, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on the stuff that I'm putting out. And if you wanna come hang out in Discord or the self-taught dev subreddit, I've got links to both of those in the description as well. Come meet other devs, uh, make friends, talk tech with people. And um, yeah, I think that's about it for this one. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.